and we're going to walk real slow. You got to watch where your feet are going too because there's a lot of cactus. <laughs> yeah. Just go real slow and kind of watch along the ridge look to see if you see a big old lizard sitting on top of a rock. They're here, look. See that? Right there and that right there. That's lizard poop and there's a bunch of it. There's gonna be, a, there's gonna be quite a few on this hill. There's poop everywhere. <laughs> Scant. Huh? Well, I'm not ready to turn over rocks yet. We're gonna kind of just case the joint a little bit. There's some big ones up here. You can tell by the, the scant. There's a lot of it up here. We found the right hill. We may not have to go anywhere else. We're here at the bottom and work our way up. But somewhere on this hill, there's some decent sized looking mountain boomers. Here, swap with me for just a minute. If you see one, you know the routine. Don't let him get away, or at least don't take your eyes off of him. They're pretty neat house cleaners. If you see a whole lot of trash in front of one, they probably aren't in there. Because they keep them cleaned out pretty well. I think that's a mouse again, too. Probably the same one we looked at last time. That's not to say there might not be a lizard. Don't think so. This is just nothing but one big cavity. I think it's best we find a, we might find a mouse in here. I don't think we're gonna find a lizard. Too much, too many nuts. Negative there. Yeah, but I actually turned in a paper to the Junior Academy of Science on artificial incubation of Crotophytus cholerus cholerus, Mount Boomer's Latin name. And uh, I, I successfully hatched out a number of babies in high school uh, from the eggs and uh, actually had one hatched in class. Uh, and it was real interesting. We had, um, I had hatched a couple out and I took an egg up to school and uh, into the science class and one hatched right in front of the class came out of the egg and took off running scared everybody to death but it uh, it hit the it hit the table running and it would take a while to catch him but that's that's kind of uh, the way they are once you know they're completely self-sufficient once they're once they come out of that egg they're they're ready but it uh, I, I didn't pursue it that much um, kind of went to work you know once you get out of high school that's the way things are but I kept the hobby kind of kept the hobby up whenever I had the opportunity because it was just fun and other people seem to enjoy it too. Oh yeah, see it gives the, the um, state reptile some uh, notoriety. A lot of people don't know that it is our state reptile. I was working here about a year and a half and he brought in a videotape of uh, these lizards called mountain boomers. I guess they're ring neck lizard. Anyway, they look like little dinosaurs running around in this little terrarium. And I uh, asked him where his terrarium was and he said, well, he thought it was back in Hinton. And uh, so, uh, anyway, he calls the guy up and lo and behold, it's still there. So he goes and picks it up and I guess it's dusty and needs polished up and that sort of stuff. But he fixes the terrarium up and then, and then we uh, asked me if I want to go catch lizards with him sometime in Hinton. And I'm game for anything like that. So anyway, so we caught a couple of lizards and uh, anyway, now later on we're going to go out and try to catch some bigger bigger lizards with prettier colors on them and stuff and hopefully it'll be before the temperature gets to 110 115. watch out for the cactus there's not as many here but there's cactus around and don't fall you spot one? Yeah. Oh, that's a big one. Come here. Just watch him, see where he goes. Okay. Good, an adult male. Yay. Oh, boy. Here, you hold the net and I'll do it. Now, wait just a minute. Because if we just scare him out again real quick right now, we'll have right back where we started from, he'll go crawl on another rock. There's a cactus in my foot. Did you get one? Yeah. He'll get tangled up in this, it won't hurt him. And I'll get my irritator out. 
And that's our best chance is getting him to come out there and get tangled up in that little net. I don't want to break this thing. He's not a huge one, but he's a good size one. I like him. He's pretty. His name's Bill. Bill? Okay. I'm going to leave him no place to get out of that net. He's not the only one up here. I'm sure. Unless he produces a lot of scant. I have to stand there with the net and catch him. Because this he went, he was right up here in front and I made him mad and he went a little deeper. Oh God, don't look. Keep your eyes on him. <laughs> you see which one he crawled under? Probably that great big one, huh? Yep, he's under there. Well, we failed the first time. They do, uh, mountain boomers have uh, several different little social rituals and I've got a little bit, hopefully I'll get some better film before summer's over, but the male and the female before they mate, they have a little dance that they go through and they just kind of walk around each other in a circle and you can tell uh, that there, there's a social interaction going on of some kind. I'm sure it's extremely primitive, but it's interesting to watch. The males will puff up and act uh, like males do something like a peacock. They'll puff up and look big and their colors will be real bright. Uh, and the males do the same thing when if there's a territory issue. And I bet the two little males, mountain boomers that I have, uh, uh, have gone through that more than once. I've got to witness it two or three times where they'll try to decide who's gonna be the, the king of the rock. And whoever wins that gets to sit on top of the rock and the other one has to go hide in the corner. And that's, uh, that's two of the, probably the most interesting ones to watch is when they, uh, when they, when they fight over territory and when they mate. I've noticed when, uh, when the mountain boomers, when they first crawl out from under the rock in the morning, I go down and watch just to, to see how they behave. When they first come out from under, the, under uh, a night's sleep, they're a little bit darker colored and they'll go sit on top of the, the highest rock they can find where there's the most sunlight and within just a matter of 15 or 20 minutes their color starts to brighten up. Uh, it's all kind of based on their health too. They need to be healthy animals or that doesn't really take place either. Sometimes they don't brighten up if they're not healthy. Uh, but the males, will, the, the longer they stay in the heat, uh, the more they seem to like it, and the brighter their colors get, and the more active they become. Uh, as, a, as a general rule, uh, with few exceptions, when I catch a group of collar lizards, it's for the summer. Uh, at the end of summer, uh, I generally take them back to where I caught them and re release them. Uh, there are probably in some areas, I don't think that the population from what I can tell from where I've been has changed a whole lot. Um, they're, they're a real good survivor. And this one particular farm where I've caught most of the collared lizards has a, uh, seems to have a real healthy population. The, the last time that we went out, pretty much every place we stopped, we found some. Uh, I'm sure there were a lot more around that we didn't get to. Uh, and that's, that's a kind of a testament to their, their uh, survivability. But they are, um, if I turn them, I make sure that they're fattened up at the end of summer and they're ready to hibernate, but that's just an instinct for them. Once you turn them loose, they're gonna go hibernate if they need to uh, eat a little more or whatever they need. Uh, but I think that's kind of uh, the fact that there's a real healthy population someplace that I've probably, I've probably got hundreds of them over the years and there's still a healthy population of them. Uh, probably has a lot to do with to releasing them at the end of summer. I think we'll go try another little spot. Maybe we can find something with easier rocks to turn over. At least we got to see one today. This is one of the, some places that are easier to catch them than others. And there are so many cavities in this. That's one of the natural reasons they probably like it here. They can find a nice safe place without digging a hole. And it makes the percentage of success maybe a little lower. But this is the same hill where we caught two about five weeks ago. But there's one more spot I know of where there are not quite so many big rocks and lots of little ones. 
and I hope it'll probably be more foot chase than excavation. We'll try one more hill today. This one used to have a lot of animals. We'll see if it does today. Right over the top, Brett. And start looking. Said, don't worry about catching it. So if I take my eyes off, we will run away. Hey, don't, don't, just keep watching. He ain't real fast. Me too. Okay, watch it, Brett. Follow it. Keep your eye on him. Great. Hide under the cactus. Here, I'll, I'll lift. Hang on, hang on. Oh, you One. <laughs> yeah, just a few cactus thorns. Hi. Hi, little guy. It's a little girl. Okay. Yay, we caught something. <laughs> I caught it through the net, but it jumped out. That one, I'm pretty sure that was too little to mate. But it's pretty. She knew where to hide. Turn shrill. I'm gonna touch his tail. Now you're gonna have to carry it back this way. No, well, usually what I do is I put one back leg through here and one front leg through here. Is it not clawing you? That's good. Catch one of each feet. Real pretty one, especially for a female. Colorful. When's the next time we're coming? I don't know yet. Oh. Well, that first time, all we did really was we, we found two and picked them up and put them in a box. Hi. This is the first trip she's really gone where we had to work for it. Did you know how fur? And it, it's, fur? That's fur. I think what, when, probably one of the biggest things when kids come up and watch them in the tree and they, they, they have a little more appreciation for the animal. They don't feel like, you know, go out and kill whatever they find running around the woods. They, they kind of have a little respect for it if they can see it up close and yeah. watch it eat and watch them behave. They're a little bit less likely to go out and be mean to wildlife and just try to kill stuff just for the Hi. fun of being mean. Well, we finally caught something. Yeah. We've seen a bunch of, but at least we have something to take home and put in our terrarium. Whoa! That's it, bite me. Ah. But it didn't hurt. Just a little. <laughs> She's chewing on me. Well, it, it uh, probably affects small kids, small children more than, uh, than adults. Uh, adults seem to enjoy it too, but uh, it's, kinda, it's kinda fun to, uh, to see small children learn to appreciate something a little bit more. If they can see it up close uh, and have a little more uh, appreciation for what the, what the animal is, and uh, hopefully when they find them and see them out in the wild, they'll have more respect for them and leave them alone and not want to do harm to them, but just uh, enjoy looking at them and uh, uh, mostly just have some respect for, for nature and maybe that transfers over to other animals.
that it, uh, it's not such a good idea to just try to run over everything you see. That maybe it's, it's, it's more fun to just kind of watch them and let them be. Go ahead and come around if you want there's room. There's... No, if they move. They Depends on the age group. When they're real small kindergarten age kids, they want to know their names. <laughs> and they want to know which one's the boy and which one's the girl. And um, sometimes they ask about, you know, what they're doing when they get ready to eat. Uh, they kind of act surprised by that, but they seem to enjoy that a whole lot. You get into the teenagers and they start asking more questions about where do they live, uh, you know, that, that type of thing, more technical questions. And adults go back to more like the little kids are. They just stand around and say, what's its name and what color is it? They go back to more just enjoying the entertainment, watching them eat something and watch a, watch a little small lizard kill something that's half its own size and swallow it. Uh, it's kind of like Jurassic Park. It's kind of like going back to the, it's fun to watch uh, an animal that, that behaves that way, uh, that isn't a threat. I'm just glad they aren't 30 feet long. 